Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian. Today we're going to be working on my 2008 VW GTI. So it's developed a pretty substantial oil leak and we originally thought it might have been the oil pan leaking. Upon further review, that oil pan's held on with silicone. The odds of it leaking, as we found out, are kind of minimal. So anyway, now we've turned our attention to the oil filter housing. I'll throw some clips of the oil pan job in there just so you know. Anyway, we're pretty sure that the oil filter housing is leaking because it's plastic. <laughs> Anything with 210,000 miles on it. Plastic in contact with coolant oil for all those years and miles. It's probably not in good shape. So let's talk and more doing. Let's fix this. So, I don't know if you can see all that, but there is oil pretty much everywhere under here. We cleaned all this off yesterday after taking the belly pan off, wiped it all down, and ran it some, and it looks as though all our oil came out in that vicinity, and it's really clean in that area, whereas some of the other spots are dirtier and have more, more chunks on them. So my theory is that the oil pan gasket is leaking and it's pushing all the oil right out in this vicinity, getting it everywhere else. Because the rest of it is wet, but it's not poured out like that. Factory siliconed it. Kind of wish we had known that before. But it wasn't real clear anywhere, so got a little layer of silicone all the way around there. We'll give that a few seconds to tack up and we'll jam it back in. They're all run down. Now we just need to go around and torque them. We've already checked them, just verifying. 15 Newton meters. So all the bolts are back in, tightened, everything's cleaned up. We're getting ready to start it, but I kind of have a sneaking suspicion that our oil filter housing is going to be our problem. So we'll, uh, we'll start it and see if we still have oil leaking. So said oil filter housing it sits on the front of the engine down behind the radiator and between the throttle body. It's apparently a pretty common problem because there's plenty of parts available on the aftermarket, as is this. So this is where the oil filter lives. Here's where the oil cooler adapts, which all bolts to the block. And I believe the PCV crankcase ventilation hose attaches to that. So anyway, let's go in after that thing. First things first, this whole cover has to come off. There would normally be a clip here, but it's been broken off because it's come off so many times. Pop these little clips loose. Then over here on the air snorkel, there's a seven millimeter screw that holds this on. And this should pull off the little rubber grommets that hold it on. Yours may be like this one, where some are missing or broken or stay stuck on the engine. So we pretty much need to get down in here and this throttle body needs to come off. There's this sound tube that runs around to make you hear your engine. So that appears to have an eight millimeter bolt and that looks like a T30. So we'll get that out of there. We'll have to get some, to get a clip We'll have to pull this clip off. Oh, Nelly. get the rest of this tube off, we need to get that clamp off down there. I got this kit a while back. It has some 
some options as far as pliers and they seem to work pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off here just to give us some more visibility. These are torque screws also. Likely a T25, because the T20 is not fit. It's always a challenge on these engine bay videos. So the throttle body lives right here. It has T30 bolts that come up through the bottom, which absolutely suck to get out. But unfortunately, they have to come out. So the electrical connections will come off first. And these stupid connectors can be a bit of a challenge at times. Sort of acts like a hinge. You should be able to push it on the clip, it should release. There, I heard it click, so now it should come off. This bottom one came off already fairly easily. And then that should kind of pull out of the way. There's another one down here on the block. I can't remember if you can get this or not. So it unclipped. Oh, and it's come out of its bracket, so it's not wanting to come off. Well, we can get that in a minute. So, there's a clamp right here, a hose clamp that is the inlet to the throttle body. And that's a seven millimeter. Then that should come off the throttle body. At least come loose. So it looks like so that's the boost pipe. So that goes down to the intercooler and back. It looks like there's an electrical connection down here, probably for a pressure sensor, etc. So let me see if I can get that out of there. So I heard it click. Usually when that happens, you can pull it off. There we go. So next, this boost pipe. Looks like it's attached here with a 10 millimeter nut. We'll get that. So next, I believe, we need to go under the car and get this boost pipe out of here. Under the car to get this boost pipe off, and it looks like a T30 right here. And then there's a clip over here. I have that clip slid back. This should come out. We'll see if there's a bunch of oil in there. There's sometimes a little bit. Not as much as I thought. So next, I, sh I think that's everything loose. I should be able to wiggle this whole boost pipe out of here. I went ahead and pulled the cooling fans out. It's four, I guess they're probably T30 screws, T27, T30. And the electrical connector and they drop out the bottom. Gives you a lot more access. Now for what's probably the worst part, in my opinion, of this job. The throttle body needs to come off. There are four T30 screws that come up through the bottom of the throttle body into the intake manifold. One there, one back here that you can't see, and then two in the back that you really can't see. I don't remember in the past if I removed the cooling fans, but you kind of have to come up underneath and get into them. And then you really have to feel from the back. I don't recall removing the, pan the fans previously, so maybe this will make it easier. So you pretty much have to do this by the braille method. I think that's all of them. So, thought I had gotten the one from the back. So I got the two in the back, one in the front, and now the easy one. Possibly in the front.
So there's the throttle body. Now I need to go find the other two screws that fell out somewhere. I'm not sure if this will show up or not. So the internet tells me this positive crankcase PCV hose runs from up here at the valve cover down around behind and hooks on kind of right above where we have to get to the uh, oil filter housing down in here. So there's a little broken clip up here. It should allow that to come off. I guess technically you don't need to remove the top, but you have the same clip. Down here at the bottom, it should pick up and off. So there's the clip that holds that thing on. You're supposed to be able to pull up on it or something. And it comes off, not so much the case here. So now that that's pulled loose, somehow we need to fish it on out of here. And the internet told me also that I probably should get a new one. So we'll just kind of, oh, maybe, maybe it'll come out. Kind of go ahead and get that thing out of there. I hope I got a new one anyway. So we're down this far. This is the oil cooler. There's a coolant pipe that comes in. We'll have to take loose in a minute, but there's a bracket right here. And this is actually a six millimeter triple square. So that should loosen that hose somewhere under here. Gotta be another something connecting this pipe. So this is gonna likely be impossible to see, but get down in there. Under this pipe and under this wire loom is a another bolt, and that one is either a triple square or a torx. I'm guessing that's a torx. So let me get that out of there. So both of those are actually triple squares. So at some point, the inevitable has to happen. We have to release the coolant from the engine. There's this little pump right here, which I guess is what circulates water after the engine's off, if it's hot, etc. cetera. We need to get that thing off there, I guess, to let the coolant out. It has one of these god-awful clamps on it. Try to let that drain and not make too much of a mess. So it's only going to drain so far until I go up here and re release the coolant reservoir cap. Get some air behind it. that drain for a few minutes so we're not laying in it. So I think we're getting close. While that dribbles out, we'll go ahead and pull this clamp right here off the oil cooler. You can possibly use this little pick tool to get behind this hose and break the tension on it. <clears throat> oh. And there's the rest of the coolant. Give that a few minutes of draining. Jobs like this are a little unfortunate for trying to get good footage because you can't get any good camera angle. So that coolant hose is off, mostly drained. The oil cooler needs to come off next because I guess it covers the bolts for the housing so you have to take it off separate. So from the new one, it looks like there's four bolts that hold the cooler housing to the front. They are apparently M6 hex. So we'll fish around in there and then that oil cooler, since I've already removed the hose, should just pull off. 
We'll leave the pan under there for now to catch any residual coolant. Kind of where it's nice to have the new one in hand. You kind of have an idea where your bolts are going to be because they have run all this other crap right in the way. So I've managed to get one bolt out. Then I also, this wiring harness is back behind this bracket. I was able to peel that out of there and get a long six millimeter hex started in the started in the bolt for this top one. But I can't really get a ratchet on it. I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough room. So I've got a six millimeter ratchet wrench. Hope is I can put that on there and then I can ratchet this out. I had to switch to my six millimeter snap-on bit because it's six millimeters all the way down the shank. The other one wasn't. If you had the right combination of extensions, you could probably do it with a shorter bit. So two more on the bottom right in the drink. All four bolts are out. So this bracket's kind of a pain in the ass. And there went the oil cooler. All right, so that bracket goes back on with the oil cooler. Back under the car, we can go ahead and this little cover off the oil filter. Now we're going to try to push this in and catch this oil out of the filter housing. And we caught some of it. So we'll go ahead and let that drain for a little bit and then we'll pop that back closed and then hopefully there's four more bolts and this housing will come off. So now I think we're we're finally in the home stretch. So next there should be four bolts that hold this whole housing on. I can see one of them. I can see one right down in here. And those are a combination 10 millimeter nut or 10 millimeter bolt head on the outside. Six millimeter hex on the inside. I think we'll go with the 10 millimeter socket for this attempt. One to go. Since I can't really see any of these bolts, I'm just kind of feeling around by looking at the new unit to see where the bolt's gonna be. The good news is, is once you break them loose, they come out pretty easily, other than all this crap being soaked in oil and antifreeze. Possibly the slipperiest combination on earth. It's four. So that's the four out. And notice this boss in the side and it goes all the way through. So I'm assuming that is sort of an oil pressure switch maybe, which I can now just now see the connector for it. So we're gonna have to get that unhooked before we get it all the way out. Oh. So what prevents this housing from coming out is there's another little bracket holds some wire connectors. There's a green one, if that helps. Has this bolt in it, which is a six mil Allen head, and that prevents anything from happening. 
So once I discovered that down there, this thing came loose. And as I suspected, the oil pressure switch is right. Right inside the housing. So now you can actually see the connector. One would hope you could release the connector without breaking it. So there we have it. There's the oil pressure switch. We'll have to switch that to the new housing. The old housing up here in the vise, part that attaches to the block, you wouldn't even think there was a gasket in there. It is so flat. So it had to be just hard and rock hard pouring oil out. Anyway, I did not buy a new oil pressure switch. So need to replace that. Somewhere I have a 24 millimeter wrench. Done with this one. I don't know if it shows up on the new <laughs> on the new housing how thick that gasket is, so that's how much it compresses over 16 years and 200,000 miles. I do not have a new ceiling washer. Generally, these are okay. So this should be ready to go. Came with the gasket installed on both sides. I'm not sure if there's an oil filter in there or not. We'll find out when we get it on the car. So down, that down in there is where it attaches to the block. So I'm gonna very carefully go in there and just wipe all that stuff off. I don't really wanna hose it down with the brake cleaner and get a bunch of garbage inside the engine right there. There's a shaft of some sort right there, which on an old school car would be the oil pump drive, but anyway, don't want to get any crap in there, so I'll go clean that off and then we'll get the new one shoved up in there. <laughs> so I used a razor blade. Uh, yeah, so it won't even fit. I used a razor blade and scraped off little remnants of hard rubber and stuff off there. Just put a light layer of grease on that gasket. So now let's start all these bolts again. The new housing is down in there and it's bolted in. The bolts are started. They're snug. It's a good idea maybe to keep the old one nearby so you can figure out where the bolts go because it is entirely braille method. You cannot see the holes. Dog's barking on cue. So those four bolts are in. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket. We'll use the braille method again to find the location of the bolt heads. And we will torque them to 15 Newton meters. Next up, we'll clean the oil cooler mating surfaces off. I wonder if that was a leak also. The gasket looks pretty crusty right there. So let me get this scraped off. So this unit already has the gasket installed on the new housing, came with it. It'll go along with, let's not forget this stupid bracket. So let me get all this put in. The oil cooler's finally on there and those bolts torque to 15 Newton meters also. And they are just as hard to get to going back together as they are coming apart. So 
So at this point, there's a bunch of electrical connectors. I need to get back, reconnect. But I believe the cooling system and the oil system are back together. So I'll go ahead and refill the coolant. Normally I would just reuse the coolant, but got so much oil and crap in it that I'll just go back with some of this. This vehicle calls for a G12. According to this, it's compatible with G12. So we'll just let this sit overnight. It should burp some of that in there. So the coolant tank sat overnight and pretty much stayed full. So that told me at least there wasn't a leak or a way to let the coolant out. So I believe our seal's pretty good. I also discovered, come over here and I pulled this hose off and that kind of helps bleed the system. So I got a bunch of air out once I pulled it off and then fluid will come out. So that's a quick tip to at least get most of the coolant in there. So at this point, I'll just start putting all this back together and we'll go from there. So as I'm going back together, it was recommended by pretty much everything I read, you buy a new PCV hose that it actually attaches down there to the, uh, to the oil filter housing. So I did purchase a new one, made in the USA of all places. So now, I need to remember how, how this thing fits in here. So it attaches up here and down on the housing. So I'm going to try to reverse my steps here and feed it back around. So there, now I just need to snap that back on perhaps remove this one, which is probably going to break. Anyway, something like that. The new housing came preloaded pre with a filter, so that's nice. Go ahead and add some oil to it. Since all that stuff's going to be empty, so she's probably going to clatter a little bit when it starts. Need to get a little bit of oil down on the gasket too. If you own one of these cars, you probably already know that this is a 36 millimeter nut on this oil filter housing. And you need to torque it to 25 Newton meters. It's 25 plus five, so I guess 25 to 30. Reattach the engine cover, hook that air intake back up, mass airflow meters hooked up. I think everything's plugged in, I'm not completely all back together, but we're back together enough to run. Coolant's up, oil's between the lines. Let's go. I don't see anything pouring out the bottom yet. freezing cold out, so I'll just open the door a little bit. Let this run a minute or two and see if it'll suck in some coolant. So all that's left at this point is top the oil off. I would assume if you were doing this job on your car, you would have changed the oil. Since we inadvertently kind of went down the wrong path and changed the oil pan, replaced the gasket, actually replaced the silicone and put fresh oil in it. That oil's <laughs> has like no miles on it. So we'll need to run it a little bit more, heat cycle it. Obviously I still need to put the fans back in, put the rest of the air snorkel back on, kind of finish up the project. But in general, that's how to replace the uh, oil filter housing on your BPY. 2.0 TFSI engine on your Mark V GTI 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.